Hey, welcome to Sketch Magazine Podcast. I'm Robert. I'm back with Chris. Hey, Chris. Hello, Hello Bob. How's it going? Good. How about you? Doing well. It's a beautiful Saturday down here. Oh, yes. It's, it's yep. pretty nice up here, too. A little cool, but it's pretty nice. Um, well, before we dive into the meat of this, uh, we're going to go back to Digital Inks, correct? You bet. Yes. Uh, and um, catch you up on a few things. Uh, Chris has got his Kickstarter getting ready to wrap up in a few mm -hmm. days. So uh, whether this comes out before or after, be sure to go check it out. Uh, Freaks and Gods, Volume 2, Number 2. Mm -hmm. And I got it right this time. Yes, I, yes. Yes, I cheated. I got it open on the other screen. Uh, yeah, well, oh, 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 I see. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, regularly it was going to just be Number 6, but with right. my publisher changing its name and kind of relaunching itself. Right. That's why. So, but that's like legend. Remember, we had that whole conversation about legendary numbers or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Legacy yeah. And where do I put yes. it? And now I got it all over the darn place. Yes, but um, so check it out, and I'm sure that down the road there'll be another issue. And you were yep. talking about possibly doing something in the same universe, maybe down the road. We're going to twist uh, your well, arm. I, there's no twisting involved on this. It's just a matter of doing it. Um, I did the I did the Tales of the Dark Tunnel Kickstarter, um, which set up um, three new traveling trio, uh, tra traveling trio, three, three new guys, characters, uh, and I'm going to be doing another one. It's just Great. a matter of fleshing out the story uh, and then doing it. Great. Great. So, yeah. And um, May the 2nd. We'll just we'll date this 2022 because this will be mm -hmm. up forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sketch Magazine 47 is going to hit Kickstarter, and this yes. is the first time we've reached out to Kickstarter with Sketch. So, um, by the time this hits, it should be live. So, I'll put a link below so you, you can find it. Go check it out, it's going to be a great issue. Glad to have mm -hmm. Sketch back. Oh, yeah, so, I'm excited about it. I am too. So, um well, they're not here to hear all this stuff. They're here to check out Digital Inking Part 2. Part 2. So are you two. ready? So I, I hope so. So am I sharing? You are sharing. Okay. So let me share my screen. I had to bring if, – if if anyone wonders why I'm suddenly now looking over this way, it's because I had to move us so I can see you to the other monitor. So right. um, I can – share my no then i think you got it there we go okay yep so this was not the page that we had up last time Correct. that was this one but yes. i thought one thing that we didn't do was we didn't talk about bordering putting the panels in okay if you're going to be doing a comic book yeah a comic book yeah you have to do that i guess you don't have to you know um uh, uh can't think of his yep. name who didn't do very much of that yeah. So if you're absolutely new to comics, bordering sort of holds each frame together mm -hmm. and you can use them. I see uh, your artist sort of used them to move the story on this page from right. left yep. to right, right mm -hmm. to left, and back to I love instead of I love that. Right. That is awesome. So what yeah. I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to do like the top quickly just so you can see. Um, uh -huh. And uh, then you can just use all that same information to do the rest of it. Cause this is about inking, but we did skip this and this is kind of important. Um, right now you can see that it's selected and here it is that mm -hmm. this page is on this layer. I have it at 50%, just like in Photoshop or pretty much any program with layers. I'm going to lock that just so I don't goof around. So now anything you try to do on this layer, you can't. As a matter okay. of fact, when you when you pick up when you pick a tool, a, a pen or a brush of any kind, and you go on a locked layer, it does this, so it won't even let you. Right now, I'm looking at this page, Chris, where we dive into the text. Yeah, and I'm looking at it, and you know my history is blue line, and I print borders and stuff. Right. And I'm looking at it. I'm going, oh no, his artist drew way above the panel border up there. What's Chris going to do with that? 
Oh, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I opened I opened up um, just a generic page, and um, I do have a template saved. We can talk about that um, maybe in the next one. But I have a template saved that actually has the, the borders already in there. Uh -huh. Like it has, I'm sorry, it has guides. So right. I know where they are. And what I would normally do, let me just do this. I turned off the lock. Um, I'll take the object selection, which is actually M, not M. Yeah. No, it's O, sorry. Um, and then if you hold Shift and Alt, I'm sorry, sh Shift, it can constrain the size. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't, you know, oh, hey, I'm, I must have, oh, right here. Sorry, I lied. I have it checked, keep aspect ratio. So no matter how much I do, it's not going to get thin and squished. Right, right. So you can then um, size it however you want. Um, sometimes okay. this this penciler, Giuseppe, he um, will go over the borders uh, too right. high, like, like up into here and there. So I have to adjust. And maybe in the past, I've had to like just draw and extend like a little bit of the hand here or you know that that kind of thing well let's just right. say for the sake of argument that is perfect <laughs> okay right. so but i could just that. see somebody coming in going oh what's he going to yeah. do so that was perfect that's perfect explanation right. you can actually resize the penciled artwork right. very simple right and then just you know ink from there roll with it just so you know, in case there's people who are like, what do you mean aspect ratio? If I undo this and I undid the lock and I don't hold the shift key. Ooh. See? Yeah, you you don't you don't want that. Twilight so, zone. Yeah, control Z will undo anything you've done. So right. I will lock it again so that we're not confused. Now that I gotta think of where that is. Yeah, okay. So it's in I hit U, which is funny. I don't even know what that tool is. I just know the shortcut. <laughs> it's for um, tool properties. And within that property, you get like lines, rulers. Okay. This actually creates um, manga style, like speed lines and surprise lines. Same oh, thing cool. with this. I've used this sparingly because I that's not the style of book I'm going for. Right. But right here is frame border. Okay. okay. And the first, you have different sizes. You've got rectangle, you got polygon, you got frame, which is drawn by hand. I don't ever really use those. And then there's mm -hmm. these dividers, which we'll talk about in a second. But we start with a frame, just a rectangle. Okay. And you go up here, see the tool, how it becomes a plus? Mm -hmm. And you draw one giant frame. This is how I do it. Okay. Now, if I were to leave this as is, I believe I can ink inside of here, mm -hmm. this down here, and it'll the purple is masked, so it'll never go beyond those lines. But oh, I don't do okay. it that way. What I do is, um, actually, we can do this real quick now that I think about it. This is an easy one to do. You take uh -huh. a frame, a divide frame border, and I have a gutter that's kind of large. A gutter, if for those who aren't 100% sure, is the space between the panels. That's yes. called a gutter. And what you do is, let me zoom in. You, this will divide the frame. And you got to think about it, because if I divide this frame this way, it'll divide it all the way to the bottom. But right. what I want to do is this. And just you just click and you drag. If you want it straight, you hold shift. Oh, OK. If you want it 100% straight, you hold shift. This one's on an angle. You go like that. Now it's created a new you go this way. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Now, these are really huge gutters, so I could adjust that if I want. Okay. And same thing here. And then the same thing here. Again, if I wanted it straight up and down, hold shift. I'm holding right. shift now right now. And what it does is it goes at the different angles. This is 45, 90. 180, okay. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I don't want that. So I take my hand, I finger off a shift and you're done. Okay. Literally, you could be done at that point. I would right. probably have adjusted the gutter sizes because I think they're too large. 
Now, what I do is I go over here and I right click on this and I go to rasterize. And that creates a new rasterized frame layer above it. Okay. And because of how I am, I, I keep this, I turn it off and I just keep it in case I need to move the panels around. It's a lot easier on this pan, on that layer. And then uh -huh. in here, what I do is I select white and fill and I click here and it fills all that in the in between leaving these holes here let me turn everything off so you can see what i mean see right mm -hmm. and then with this i make sure that this layer is like i did in the last video the monochrome because i want it to be black or white i don't want any grays or anything and then right. i lock it so now anything i ink let me take black so we can see it. Well, I can go right, you know, underneath it, you know, and like, mm -hmm. like this, I go too far. It doesn't go, this is above it. So it hides all your lines. And then and that's why if you ever watch any of my videos on YouTube, the inking videos, this one's going to be coming. This page is actually going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. Oh. I think about it. But what you'll see me do is I, I go like this and then down. And I'm still I'm still drawing a line and then like this because I know I'm going to want this area to be filled in black. So if I turn off the frame, it's a closed box yeah. and yeah, I, I can I can fill it. So and I noticed that this layer is color. So there we go. But yeah, that right there is how to make a, 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 a the, use the border tool. One more thing before we go, though. If we go back to this, I don't know why it does that. I lose my, I lost the uh, outlines on them. But you can take this, the O tool. I'm sorry, this one right here, which is actually O on the keyboard. And okay. you can select the point, hold shift and select more than one. You can do that and move it over and down. Um, okay. I see right here he has he has this in here. Mm -hmm. Let me just do one quick thing. You, you use this tool, line uh, correct line Y, add a point. You can add a point there and there and there, and then go back to your. And then and then you can then put a stroke on that. I should have done that before I did the raster layer, but. You get the idea that it's all mm -hmm. this point right here. I think anyone coming in here who knows the difference between vector and, and raster, these are vector. The frames are vector. Okay. And right. then I rasterize them. So, um, okay. So we got that. Hopefully we're cool with that. Any questions you can comment or. Okay. I'm going to close this because I'm working on a slightly older machine and I'm afraid having two things open at once might be. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's where we left off last time. We yes. got half man here. Half man. And half man. And what I did was um, I got the brush tool. Okay. This layer is turned to monochrome. Uh, because it's monochrome and I have the brush tool, this doesn't give me options for anti-aliasing. But if I went to here, um, I can't because it's not going to let me do it. It's a different kind of layer. Ah, the paper is also a raster layer too. Right now I have it so that any line I draw is going to be black or white. And you can change it to like a softer fuzzy brush. But this is an ink brush, so let's leave it at that. Right. Which is good here. Just, just be aware that if you end up changing layers, that could happen to you. All right, so as you know... Every inker, I, okay, let me back up, Bob. I've seen videos, and I'm sure you have, where people are inking, and I see them draw or ink, and I never see them rotate the page. Right. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> no, well, being doing some traditional inks, I mm -hmm. always rotate. I never tape an, a page down to ink on a table and just ink it. Right. No, I got to have a, a, a wrist movement. 
mm -hmm. flows, uh, especially when you're doing like a brush, right? Because you're pulling a thin, thick, and you, I mm -hmm. mean, if you're inking hair and you're going, that would be hard, right? Where if you rotate the figure to get the flow of it, yes, it just makes it feel more natural, right? Because I believe that everybody has a certain angle that they right now i'm i'm going top down so my my natural easier stroke to a tr uh, to achieve was this way right you know okay. i can also do this way but it's just natural for me to want to go like this mm -hmm. you know so i this program comes with a variant okay first of all i love this this program clip studio Man, paint. We, there you go we hadn't mentioned it, the it yet best. Yeah. clip studio paint it's the best. It was the most intuitive program I ever ran into. It's like clearly they they talked to artists or they were artists when they you know who made this, but they have a rotate where you can rotate the canvas as you okay. work. Okay. Now, because <laughs> I just never really know what that tool is here, I usually hold. Let me try it. R. R rotates it. You push the R key, right? And it's like the center of the screen is always the center that it rotates. So if I push down, shift, drag over here, now this will be relatively the center. Okay? Okay. But there's a shortcut. There are um, the plus and minus key. Mm -hmm. On your keyboard, we'll do that. Or okay. what I like is shift oh wait let me get out of that tool okay is shift and the space bar at the same time and you can rotate oh uh, okay and that goes a whole lot easier because you can move holding the shift down push down the uh, i'm sorry you can move with the space bar yeah you can drag it okay and then sh hold the shift down at the same time and now you can rotate very cool and then if you want to get back to like real quick mm -hmm. double click hold your oh. shift and your your space bar and double click and it brings you back if you're using the r key which is fine too it's the same thing double click okay. and on my pen i have this button right here this mm -hmm. back one right here as a double click okay. so i just you know, I, it's just workflow for me. You know, right. other people are going to have their own thing. Okay, so we, we got that. I got the tool. Everything's looking good. I'm at 15. Let's put that at 12. Again, the bracket keys move that. And uh, I usually start with the eyes. So I'm going to rotate because I'm – and, again, pressure sensitivity on the Wacom. And he's got some – some um, eyelashes there going on, but I think that's meant to be like all evil and stuff. Right. Some shadowing. Yeah. Um, the good thing and the bad thing about inking in a program like this is you can get, oh, by the way, zooming. Shift. I'm sorry, not shift. Why do I keep saying that? Space key and control, probably command if you're using a Mac. And then you can drag out, you know, how close you want to get. Oh. Problem is, is the beauty and the curse of digital inking is you can get really close. The beauty <laughs> of it is now I have to make, I can do less movements to make this eye, right? Right. And I can get it right where I want. But the problem is, is that when you can get in this close and worry about pixels you start to worry about pixels it's right. like i first tried inking with um adobe illustrator and i learned that when you can move and adjust every single line i moved and adjusted every single line <laughs> <laughs> took me twice as long oh, to do it you know because i was uh I'm just kind of going around. He's got some. Now here I'm using the 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 pressure sensitivity to my advantage. Yep. You know. Um, oh yeah, that looks nice. And then here, one thing I with this particular character, 
half his face is literally a robot. So after I've done this side of the face and I put the robot side in, I actually come in and add what looks like might be shadows. Uh huh. You know, um, and then fill. Okay. Apply to connected pixels only. Oh. If you have that unchecked, it will fill the whole the whole, oh. the whole canvas. Oh no! So, but when you click that, it will seek out and fill closed areas. Okay. That that's another point of confu uh, not confusion, but frustration for a lot of people when they first get the program. Right. So. Now I'm oh, I'm going to be like one of that. these guys that go. Okay. But Chris, you added extra lines, and you didn't do exactly what the penciler did. Right. Okay. That is the job of an inker. There you go. That is the job of an inker. Um, right now, as is, this is a pretty nice page, pretty nice character. But as an inker, you're not just tracing it. You are actually you're not tracing it. You're embellishing you're actually using the pencils as as a guideline i've asked giuseppe for all sorts of reasons to keep his stuff a little loose you know right. i know my strengths i ask him to make sure faces look good and that hands are well drawn those are my weaknesses but otherwise he keeps everything kind of loose mm -hmm. um so i can go in and um actually you know embellish and make the drawing mine based on his right so if i turn i turn off the inks uh, the pencils i'm sorry you know oh yeah all i gotta do is hit that little eye eye icon if you didn't know that okay and it turns off a layer see you know any of them too so but yeah um see so right here this is a good example i'm glad you brought that up these lines right here are denoting Yes. He's like, ah, he's really upset. So when I get to these, which is now, I am literally just going to okay. Oh yeah. Oh, I could yeah. have followed them and it would have looked good too, but I'm just, you know. Right. Now right here he's got this in here and it looks like it's um uh, he's, I think he's trying to get like a, an old beat up, maybe he was working for a shadow, but I don't really know if I'm going to use it because we have okay. a scar that comes through. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So let me show you a cool feature that I know you're going to love being a traditional anchor. And I love when I, when I got it. So I'm at a 12 size brush, which means I can get that size line. Or that Ooh. size line. Wow. So we, can get, we got a scar here that looks like it's got some stitches. Uh -huh. Just kind of following the contour. I'm going to... Ooh, that's a mistake. Uh, yeah, because if you do this and hold down, that was... Uh, yeah, what, what does that? There's a tool that... Never mind that. That was a mistake. On. So I'm going to put like stitches in here like this. Oh, okay. okay. And I'm going to come in here and kind of, and then what is great is right now, if I turn off the paper layer, which is white, the ink layer is actually black on transparent. Yes. Right. So um, if you hold, well, well, you got your, your brush. If you hold, um, let me go over here so you can see it. You hold down alt, you get an mm -hmm. eyedropper. Yes. And you, you can select a color. You can also select transparent. And okay. down here, that's that is selected. Okay. The transparent is selected. So you know where I'm going with this, right? Mm -hmm. You can now get rid of the uh so it gives it like this added, but then And the benefit of going transparent is that you're not using a white. You're not throwing a right. color on top of that to get rid exactly. of it. Exactly. You're then, physically erasing that ink off, right. that, off that level. 
And the beauty of that, like you said, is when you put a color layer underneath here, you're not going to have white dots all over the place. It's it's right. just going to be so. And then you can ink into there, um, and make that look even, uh, you know, like it's in his eyebrow, yeah. and a little bit in here too. Now, uh, remember I said that my uh, I have okay. If you look at a Wacom stylus, I'm sure other ones are like this too. It's got the two buttons, mm -hmm. two Alt. Okay. Right. So right. instead of holding the Alt key to select things, I just hit that. See how it's changing? I just push that oh, button. So okay. I that, and then I have. You know, um, if you watch my my YouTube videos, it probably goes by real quick. But that's that's what I'm doing. So, and you set that up in what Wacom? That is set up in in uh, Wacom. Wacom tablet. Yes. Right. Okay. In the in the in the Wacom tablet properties you can select okay um i think it's pretty much any any keystroke i don't think you can make these buttons like a q you know but right. like an alt or a, com a command or a control mm -hmm. and that that is the biggest thing for me because then you can go back and forth and when you're coloring it's really nice too it's like oh i got that area i gotta fix so you grab that color you missed okay so I'm going to change the size of the brush a little bit because I'm going to do some contour. So I just use the bracket keys like that, 17. Mm -hmm. And I like the way he had that. Uh -huh. Okay, so you know, right there, I did it with, I was going to do it without even talking about it. I, went, I don't like this. And I already, what did you notice? I already switched to the back to the, uh, yes. I'm just going to erase that because I don't like it. Okay, that's his weird little beard. I, I just did that haphazardly so I have an idea of where his chin is. That makes sense? Mm-hmm, yes. Oh, that's too thick. And then I'm going to go back down to 12 and... Rotate because that's how I, you know. More comfortable. Yeah. So, you know what? I mean, you know, this is going to be funny. I have done traditional inking and this inking for so long. I think, well, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> ah. you know, that's, how, that's how you do it. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? But, okay, so let's tackle the hair. Uh -oh. Are you gonna add when you're looking at that those spikes and stuff? Are you yeah. gonna add more flow to it, or does this character have that look like spiky type um, hair? Yes and no. Um, I okay. have discovered because I've worked with Giuseppe for 14 years on various yeah. projects. I have yeah. noticed that every character has this hair. <laughs> yes. I have too. I've seen enough of his pencils to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody has hair gel. Everyone does that. Um, there's yeah. even a couple of times where I've had to go back to previous um, issues and or char character studies that you know he made right. for me, uh, like with Steve Steph, because Steve Steph, they have like 50s, not a pompadour, but their hair's more curly. A right. couple pages, they're like this. And I'm like, <laughs> I gotta go back and. But we're just gonna stick with this because I honestly don't remember. I would have to go back and look okay. um, at what kind of hair he has. But I think the other thing is that this character half man made his appearance in freaks and gods under a different penciler. Oh, okay. right? right. So Giuseppe, this is this character's second time that Giuseppe got to draw him. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. I think this is how I kept it. We're just going to go with what we have here. So okay. I'm at 12. Um, uh, you know what? Um, I'm sure people will be like, well, where do you start? Uh, you start where you want to. <laughs> right, right. Um, although, sidebar, I have tried to do the contours of characters first. Because when you get a, a whole page of the contours done, there's uh -huh. a mental thing in your head where you're like, wow, I got a lot done. Seriously, it kind of right, motivated right. me. 
Yeah, let's just sure. let's just go with it here. Now I am put you know doing some line variation as I'm right. Okay, I don't like those last two, so I'm just gonna undo. Right. I don't like that one. That'd be fine. Okay, now here's something kind of neat uh with the erasing thing. Let's say I went and I did oh 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 okay, that's too dark. Okay. Right? Right. You can select the background. Sorry, the transparent. And you can kind of try to fix it a little bit, put those lines back in, you know? Right. Or just or just erase it. That's this that it's such a it's so freaking cool that you that that's you know available. See, and that you just undid a couple of lines earlier. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't get to do that in traditional inks. You gotta no. come back with white out and then ink back over that. Right. You well, don't. You don't, you, get you, don't you don't get that option. No. Um, no. That is why in traditional inking, I would look at a page and I would literally like, I don't want to say study it, but I would go over all the panels, you know, and think, okay. And right. whenever it would be time to start inking with that brush, I would hover above the page, not nervous, but knowing that it's anything can be fixed when you're traditional inking. It's just not as easy, yeah. you know, yeah. it can be fixed. Shoot, it's I've been known to totally re-ink another panel and then tape it onto the original board. I actually had to do that. One of my first jobs um, mm -hmm. inking, I was working for Now Comics, working for the New Adventures of Speed Racer. And um, a page I got, uh, wait, yeah, there's two of them. Okay, the pa a page I got had a pencil board, like a, like a, a panel cut out from a different page and glued on. Yep. And then I had to do something like what you said when I worked for Dark Horse on uh, Angel. I had to do that too, like ink a separate mm -hmm. page. And yeah, you know, they, they sent me, um, they emailed me a new panel and I had to print it out and insert it over. Right. Cool. So yeah, um, I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. That's too heavy. Because when I bring the line in from uh, his robot head part, uh -huh. I want the hair to be kind of a little bit over it right you know so it shows movement right because he's also mm -hmm. he, he's also pretty animated in this panel because he's actually yelling mm -hmm. at this particular point of the story he's upset okay. because he doesn't know why he was brought back to life oh. he thought it was to get revenge on the on the traveling trio the atom steve steph and bargeist but um i'm not gonna tell you what happens because no don't this, tell us this is issue eight, that which issue. is issue four, yeah. All right. Okay, so if you now I'm starting to think some of these lines are this is good, this is good for variation, but you can also go down to another another level. Like I went from twelve to, to ten, and you're like, well, what's the difference? Well, that 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 is a big difference. Oh yes. You know, I don't like that. Did you see what happened there? I had mm -hmm. three lines. One, two, three. I undo and it took all three away. I see. Like it counted that as one, one stroke. Yeah, I don't know. That I run into that. I don't know what is going on there. Mm. I'm just kind of going along with what Giuseppe did, just so we can show process. No, I like it. Yeah. I'm going to probably end up inking. Don't get pitted again. Did you see that? I've seen it. It raced them all. me because what if I like this one? <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to have to redo it. Yep. Wow. All right. So I'm just going to. I'm kind of just going with what he has. I don't really. Normally, I would go through and be like, well, his hair comes through here. So I got to, you know, just so we can get on to something else. Because I just thought of something else that's really important to inking. Mm -hmm. um, at least it is to me or how it used to be I shouldn't say how it used to be that's that's not correct um, there's a lot of different styles in comic art as you know yes. right mm -hmm. and this style is I'm inking kind of heavy more like a, an a, a, a 70s 80s feel I know you right. think, you know, that's kind of what I, I, I like. 
but as you know, I've inked dozens of different pencilers so I can pick the style, you know. Right. Speaking of that, dozens of different pencilers um, and the style. We had talked about how I'm not necessarily following what 100% every line Giuseppe has. Uh huh. Some pencilers I worked for, um, like I did that that outer space one with the with the like a generic version of the Guardians of the Galaxy for you. Remember? Yes. Pencil mm -hmm. by Joel and um, I yes. worked uh, the the penciler Mel Ruby was the penciler on the on the Angel series for Dark Horse back a long time ago. Those guys drew exactly what they wanted. Yes. So it. At that point, I'm not tracing. I'm just making their pencils better. Yes. Um, if if they had missed a finger, I would have to fix that. If they added a finger, I would have to fix that. That's, that's just what your job is, you know? You're embellishing it. So, But in this case, I'm allowed to kind of do a little bit more with it than I'm – than uh, right. I would normally uh, – for a different penciler. Well, that's not right. Right. One thing I think I'm going to get into now is line variation. Um, I see a lot of seen videos um, in the past where people talk about inking and how they do it this way because it's cool. It looks cool. No, that's not why we do things. <laughs> Sure, it looks cool, but line variation is what makes a fold look like a fold. Right. You know? See, he's yeah. got some real good stuff going on in here. It kind of laid it all out for me. Um, trying to find a good spot to show that. Well, here we go. Right here. So here's a straight line for a fold. So I could just do a straight line like he did, you know. Right. Or I could get darker, a thicker line down in here towards the 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 part of the fabric where it's on his shirt uh, in his in his um in the armpit. And when you do it that way, it creates I'm having a hard time with that. There we go. Now it looks it creates a shadow in there, and all it is is a there line. You yes, you know, yes, and that is the difference with just tracing over something. Um, here, there's a shadow down in here. So I'll do that. And then I do, okay, catch up. There we go. I'm just going to do this quickly so you can understand what I'm saying. Did you see that? It yeah. did the line instead of the... Instead of okay. The so... See how thick th this line here is? And it's mm -hmm. got this shadow right here. You can see, he, you know, Giuseppe was gen generally thinking of a shadow on this side, not mm -hmm. this side. Well, it might be more up over here because of these shadows. But because this is thick and it's trying to create a shadow, the line is going to be thinner there because the light... Now, doesn't this right here seem like it's popping right off his jacket? We got a yes. dark shadow here, a thicker line here. Even though the shadow's there, the thick line still goes past it. Same thing here, and then a thinner line. Yep. Yep. Looks good. That's that's what is really um. And I'm gonna do it with a ten. <laughs> yeah. Um, your job is to make things look like. Uh, Rocks that are rocks. If they're a fabric, right. look like fabric. Hair look like hair. Now, I know that a lot of uh, people nowadays are probably big fans of manga. I am one of them. That's a different style completely. They, yeah. they do a lot of their figures are, and a lot of ones I've seen, their figures are are pretty linear but then there's there's all this beautiful rendering of inks and cross hatchings and it's just it's just really beautiful yes but this traditional yeah. style is you know but yeah you can take that and add this to it and 
you know, look at that fold. Holy mackerel. That's pretty nice. Right. See? And um, yes. yeah, I never thought when I was a kid, I would get up, I would get all excited about folds. <laughs> folds and cloth. Let me ask you. Yes. Half man here. Yes. So you, you've worked real hard on the human side of the face. Um, yes. Adding shadows, deaths, uh, mm -hmm. feathering. You want me to do this? The, the metallic side. How do you, are you, okay. do you do, how do you, diff, I mean, this is a great piece because not only do you do flesh and folds, but now mm -hmm. you got this hard metallic surface. Yeah. How do you make that, make it look, you got you got to be able to make it look different. Because it right. is a okay. different surface. It's going right. to reflect different. It's going to be colored different. How, how does the two work? Okay, in ink. Here we go. How, how do you put in it ink. Well, ink? if you were doing traditional, I would switch to a crow quill um, yeah. brush. But here I have made one. If you watch that last video, I talk about the differences in, oh, there it is, in the lines and, and how I uh, put the G pen. I, got, I think it's the G pen. Let me check yeah. that quickly. Okay. Okay. Let me check this one. Little tip: if you have this sub tool open for the G pen and you grab the crow quill, it goes to that one too. Okay. Yeah, isn't, isn't, you don't you don't have to close it again. That's cool. These, these both will work. These will create a slightly different shape and line. It just looks mm -hmm. harsher. Um, you'll also see it's I have sharper. Angle. Looks like right. sharper. Yeah. So what I'm going to do because. This is just how I do it. I use I use U, which is the figure tool. You get these options over here. See? Yes. So even if like you wanted, even if you wanted, um, say the ruler, and you click this tool over here, it's going to be the ruler will be up here, but all of these options in the sub tool will be there. And okay. if you can't, again, I'm sorry, you know what, we never mentioned this. If you can't find any of these palettes, it's mm -hmm. up in window, and then you find them in here. Okay. And you can just open them. So I like to start because I'm so, I'm just so um, particular that if I was inking this guy traditionally, I would get out my French curves and, and a straight edge, I and too. I would do these, and I would do that because that's just... This is how I am, but manga, manga studio, <laughs> I've been using it so long before it changed to the clip. They have clip studio has these tools in here, a straight edge, oh. straight edge. Okay. Uh -huh. Curve point, hold drag, and then do your curve. Uh -huh. And this polygon, which is just, just keep going. And then when you're done, you can close it or hit enter. Oh, and as you see, I have sharp corners selected. What I'm going to do is, I don't like 10. Let's try eight. I'm going to just put this in get a little closer here. Oh, that's still kind of thick because it doesn't look. Oh, I can fix that. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I got this nice harsh line. Let me grab my brush. Make sure that that does come past because I, I just like how that looks. Mm -hmm. So I go back to this tool. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. And then I take the curve. Now, this tool is fantastic. Um, you can't make a complete circle with it. And the ending and starting points is amazing too. That'll That's going to blow your mind, Bob. But let's just uh -oh. do this first. All you right. don't, when you use this tool, the curve tool, you don't click and release because then you get this weird, because what it's trying to do is it's created two points in that one spot and now you're trying to make a curve out of it. You right. click, okay. hold, and drag to where you want to go. Normally what right. I do is just mentally I click, kind of outline, the imagine that curve. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then you can thicken it up. I could have made it thicker, but I also like the idea by doing it this way, it gives it thickness. As if you used a crow quill on a, on a straight edge or something or a French curve. Yes. 
Um, you can even do that with a tech pen, like a Micron, uh, and yes, just hit I, it twice. Move your French curve in it twice. So, yeah, you're getting a lot of that. We're saying quote quote because you got you and I, you know, we've been making yeah, for a long time. A, but a lot of these pen. guys are coming from Microns and tech pens, and you're getting that look. It's fantastic. I'm going to give this just a little curve. No curve in there. Okay, so that looks that looks it's not thick enough for me, but <laughs> this particular program has a really awesome feature. So uh, you do a selection. I'm going to make a quick selection here. I use selections a lot. Um, that is selected. You can go to uh, let me see. Is it filter, line correct, adjust line thickness, and I can make that as thick as. Oh smokes! I love it. I know that is that is wow. that is just so great, you know that looks good. Yeah. And then I did about a two point, and it lined up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna do a quick little sidebar because this this is super exciting about all of these tools: your straight, your curve, your polygon, even your continuous curve. Right. They all right. have these things called starting points and ending. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let me, uh, why am I not seeing all that? Hmm. Let me just drop that down. There we go. Okay. So a starting point, and this is uh, like a um, change weather to make start of drawing gradually thinner to the degree of thin of thickness. Let hmm. me just do it. Oh, that yep. is cool. Okay. That, now that is a good taper, but it's because it's six, a six so let's put that at 15 okay. and it's going to start at the starting of it so yeah you can do an ending point ah oh, so it's got a brush or a quote curl it has a quote curl feel to it it does starting yeah. off thin you push down you get thicker and then it comes out and thins back out oh right. yeah that's nice do you, that you know i also nice. use this for <laughs> i uh, use this a lot for speed lines, oh, they punched them. You know what I mean? Uh, Boom! I got a speed line. Right. Someone throws a punch or throws something. Yeah. Um, that works. That Let me turn cool. that off. Otherwise, sometime tonight I'll be inking, going, "What the heck?" What? It works with the straight one as well. Starting point. Okay. Uh huh. Oh wow. And you could do the ending as well. Yeah. But what's really neat is um, you can change this ending to say. 600 and the beginning point to 200 and you can even see the the um preview there oh and this this cool. is true for all of these these three tools yeah okay okay so let's get back to this um i'm going to change this and uh i just want these to be that's too thick let's try this I picked polygon because you can keep going. Let's say you did that and, like, oh, that's not right. I wanted it with the polygon tool. You can go back to it and see how the cursor turns to a minus. Yes. I can remove that point and move it before I finish the line. Ooh, okay. Right. Wow. It's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I believe I'm going to have to double check this. I don't think. Half man has this much detail in his eye, in on his nose. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of more just right. like a, just a triangle. You know what? Just just for the sake sake of our, let's just let's just do it. I mean, I'm here, right? Right. Just so people can see how to, and because you were saying you wanted. Wow, that just shows okay. it's uh, so slick. It is. It's super. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I just love it. Okay, so I got that, and he's got some like, I don't know, shine, um, scuff, because um, half man is metal, but it, it, he's not made of chrome. It's just like you know, so it's scuffed, and he's been through battles and stuff. So right. if you go to uh, your brush, pen. Sorry, I call them pen, but I use it as a brush, because that's where I have it. Right. For your G, I got eight. And I'm going to give it like a scuff 
look. Down here, I'll show you how to do a quick shine, how, how I do it. So remember last week we made the crosshatched brush? Yes. I am not going to, I don't, I still think that's too thick. Let's try seven. I don't like that curve on that one. Yeah, you remember those days when you're inking and you're like, oh, I wish I could just undo, undo that one that. line. Now you can. You have to white out and the brush and. Right. So it looks a little scuffed here. Yes. This one's also giving some, how it denotes how it, it it's coming down. Uh-huh. Let me see. What am I going to do for the shadow? One thing I learned early on inking, I remember talking to an editor. I was at a convention. This is probably back in like early 1990s. Yeah, that actually existed. And um, I did this one time on, on, on inks for a shadow under a nose. Yeah. Then and like the, it, editor, huh? the editor said, uh, it looks like they got hair under their nose. You got to close yeah. that off. So ever since then, I have always just done something like this and gave that so it doesn't look like hair. Because now I have right. that line that closes it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there. If I turn off the pencils. Wow. It's not skin. Nope. It's not um it's Very dirty, slick. rough. See, now that I'm looking at this, let's show you uh let's do some shadows here. Probably and another thing I want to the the show is that if you look at the solid face that you've got there, on the mm -hmm. outside you've got a thicker line. And you're using thinner lines on the inside that also here? helps show's depth. No, like around the outside of the whole face. Right here? Yeah, yeah. That's thicker than the lines that you used on the inside of it. Right. Which helps show's mass and, right. and you know adds depth to it also. Exactly. Um it it you're right. Mass, shape, form, shadow, lights hitting things. I mean, yeah. you don't have to, you know, I have seen some artists talk like you have to be a physicist and understand all these hyper concepts. No, just take a, a, a towel and throw it over a, a chair and right. open your window and just look and go, oh, okay, that's how that works. You know, um, that's kind of all you got to do. Um, right. I might, if I, okay, this, I think that I could probably get like some variation in here a little bit more to show um, uh -huh. that there's, so, it, cause I like things so I don't want to say pristine, you, but I like, I like yeah. lines that are nice and clean, so I can go yeah. back to the curve tool. And, and, and the thing, if you go in, if you're doing that, then would that be like also adding a light source to it? Then, yeah, you're going to be thinking about a light source where I that face been. is going to be lit. Then the light, the lines would be a little thinner, and then it would help mm -hmm. show the shadowing of the face. Um, I have looked at his pencils and um 90 percent of the time when giuseppe is penciling and i'm inking um i always have a generic light source of like here like an, right. an even with a little bit you know what i mean there's only been a there's only like specific times um like there's a issue where that's going to be coming out that's in the kickstarter where they're using a blur torch to zap and blow away all this stuff from this um submarine so the light source mm -hmm. is the tip of that blowtorch and then everything was light in front of that and black behind it but in okay. this case i see shadows here shadows yes. here yeah. um here so i think the light is somewhere here that right. is why i just put these shadows here with mm -hmm. a face and the metal touch not on top right. same thing with this right Cool. And this is like a texture to show, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I can take the background, the transparent color and just really jazz it up a little bit more, like reverse. I mean, it's so subtle, but when it's, ooh, ooh that's nice. Yeah, that looks nice. Oh, that is nice. All right. So. The metal. Let's do his neck quickly, and I'll show you a trick that I've developed. I don't know, okay. you know, how people are gonna. I think that neck is a little too far in, so over. So I'm just gonna drop it down here. 
I think this this part he has drawn is wrong. I think it needs to be higher, and I think it's going to need to come down and then like this. I got to check my my reference pictures. I may have to read. I may have to quickly pencil that later. But for now, we're just going to do this. Okay. I hope that made sense. Yes. I am going to just close this off to show you my my trick. Okay, it's. That's not how I would normally do it. I'm just showing you the, for the trick. Right. Okay, so I've taken my selection tool, my auto select. I think these are a closed line. We're about to find out. Okay. It picked, it grabbed this area because it was closed. Now, just like the fill, had this been unchecked, it would have just selected the entire canvas. Everything. Right. So with that selected, and I, I use this type of thing like all the time. So I want the lines, the robot metal lines on his neck to go all the way across. And instead mm -hmm. of trying to just guess it by selecting this, whatever I do only happens in that selection. Okay. See? Yes. So now that line goes perfectly underneath it. Okay. This, okay, nice. you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I, I realize that's that's actually not right either, but we'll just try it again. Right, whatever. Yes. Uh, no hate mail. I'm doing this as a demonstration. So I'm going to go back to my auto select, right? Yes. Hold down the, um, the alt key, and I'm going to deselect what I just drew. Now I'm okay. doing this for um, the metal texture. And now you see that we got these separate things here. This is selected, that area is selected, and that area is selected. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I just drag it down. So let's zoom in so you can see what I did. So that oh. this is still not into here. I could then just delete that again. Right. Right. And I have this, right. this um, um, cal calligraphy brush made. Right. So you can just kind of go. Oh, wow. Right. Now, because this calligraphy brush is a flat line and it takes the, it, it depends on what the position is of your, of your canvas. Mm -hmm. So if I rotate it, I make it a thicker line here too. See? Yep. Fill that in, come up to here. And then when I turn off that, let me see. When you have a selection made, and I know you're thinking this, when you're in Photoshop, you can hide the selection, right? Right. I don't, in this current version, I'm only one version out. I have to update. I haven't done it yet because I'm thinking about moving everything to my laptop and uh -huh. I don't want to update and then update again. So I'm kind of in right. the middle. But you can't hide your selection. Okay. But when you're done, you can either do Control D, which will deselect it, or just hit right here. And then when I... Now, that looks like kind of a shiny, metal -y thing mm -hmm. on his neck. Which, basically, when you move the selection down, it, of yep. course, left the white line evenly on all three selections. Right. You didn't have to come back through and use the and eraser or the tool and clean those back up. Right. Yeah, it's that added the shine like, to it. That's like you awesome. used to do, you used to just go through the lines and then go back yeah. with a brush or a gel, a white yeah. gel pen, and then go over it. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's, uh, that yeah, is, that's, uh, cool. that's a secret little thing. And using your selection tool for stuff, like right here, I selected this part of his face, right? Mm -hmm. And right. you can see that his selection is color margin. It's at zero, yep. which means it'll only select that one color. Okay. which is confusing to me because there's plenty of room for that selection to continue in mm -hmm. here. But for mm -hmm. some reason it didn't. That's a, mm. that's a programmer computer person question. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But you can just, One. you know, now the reason why I select this is, you know, if you're going to be doing, um, um, you, you don't want to draw past into here when you're doing the mouth. Right. Or the or the mustache, with right. this selected, everything you draw like down here will only be in there. Right now, what I've noticed is sometimes the select 
when you're zooming in and out, when you've done a selection like this, mm -hmm. sometimes there's like a thin white line between what you've selected and the thing you've done. And okay. it, it, I think it might just be a glitch in what we're looking at. And I've never seen it printed. Okay. Does that make sense? But mm -hmm. yes. just because I'm really worried about that, I whenever I make a selection that I'm trying to stop something from going into an area, right? I take this right here, which is expanded. You can expand your selection or yes. you can shrink your selection. Right. Click that. That's at 15. That's huge. I'm going to do one pixel. Right. Okay. So, oh, no, no, it's going to draw. Uh-oh. Oh, it's just saving right now. You know, Photoshop okay. sometimes does that little thin line around mm -hmm. things, but it really never shows up when you, when you print it. But, but awesome. I keep I thinking it does. That. So I right. just added that one pixel. So everything I sure. draw will go onto that. Right. So I don't need to. That's just the thing that I, I do. Just keep in mind that sure. if you do that, if you do that expansion and you do something in here and you don't like it and you hit delete, you've now deleted your lines that on the, uh, you've, you've deleted that pixel in on all sides. Just keep right. that in mind. So let's go back to the brush. And with that selected, you can get some nice lines here for the mouth and not worry about, you know, because if, if you want a nice line and you don't want to go past, you'd have to go uh, and slow down and then your line might wiggle. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. You can just draw right, right to it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's, it's just, Makes things so much. Basically, did you ever use frisket, Bob? I'm sure you have, if I'm pronouncing Oh, it yes. I did some right. airbrushing and splatter t effects. Using right, frisket outer space. And... You draw the stars. Right. Yeah. Um, this is my version of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm masking this off, but I don't even have to worry about it. You know? Yep. That's nice. Um, now, this line is super thick. So I probably didn't really need the selection, but it was a really good opportunity just to show it. Sure. No, I like it. You know, I'm at 12. I do this a lot too. I'll start drawing on something. I'll start inking. And I've got like this much done. And then I check my brush size. And ah. then I check the layer that I'm on. <laughs> Oops. I have, a, I have a, a video coming out, I think in a couple of weeks where I'm inking. And you see that I have to, um, I actually take what I've inked, copied it, because I put it on the wrong layer, <laughs> and then put it back onto the ink layer and delete it off the one that I was uh, inking. So I think the tongue would be right there, but let's see he has it in shadow. And uh, mm -hmm. he had the teeth coming outside the lips. So, and... Uh, I think, yeah, I think he was just trying to fill that in. Right. So I will do that. But one that I like to do then is show. And this is where this, this is where this will come in handy. The. Uh, if I didn't have that selection, that would have just, you know, Went right across. I would have had a bit, oh, wow. a bit more. Uh, let me see here. Here's the center of his lip. I don't know what that's called. That's called something, isn't it? That little yeah, part of the, so. yeah. You know, and then is uh, Ming the Merciless goatee. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to keep that kind of dark on that side. Right there, I just held the shift and the space and double clicked and I got back to my normal position with the rotating. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that I go back and forth between a pull or a flick. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do that because sometimes it's easier to get the feathering that I'm looking for by this and, or that. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Now I just noticed that this selection is not going to work anymore. I got to turn it off because his beard goes underneath his chin. Oh, so control yes. D undoes it, undoes the selection. Okay. I'm sorry. It doesn't, un, it doesn't undo it. It deletes it. 
turns off. See, he's got that down here. I got my brush way too small because I thought I was hitting the rotating key, but I was actually hitting the brackets. <laughs> That's the stuff that everybody runs into. Oh, yeah. They're pushing the wrong, the wrong um, key. They're on the wrong layer. It's just important that you figure it out. What did he do down here? Let me back out a bit. I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to... I think that goatee hangs down a bit, so I'm just going to uh -huh. try to get some. Now, you're looking at this thinking, dear God, that looks horrible. It's all pixelated, and it's all, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I believe, like I said last time, um, if someone else knows differently, please let me know, that what we're looking at is a low-res version of what the page really is. Right. You know? If um, not, the, the program would have to it'd be so much more to render it. Every exactly. time you twisted and turned and rotated, you know, right, the rendering so would be crazy. I'm going to use a new tool that I don't know if it's a manga type tool. It's called the turn up pen. And uh -huh. this, I haven't adjusted this brush at all. Because when okay. I found it in, in Clip Studio, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I, I will use this all the time. Uh -huh. And I use this. Well, you'll see what it does. This is its normal settings factory oh cool right so that is so cool right oh wow i could have done that easily with my brush yep why when the why? turn up Man. pen does it like that but yep, i don't that use cool. that i don't use that for everything all the time as you can see I didn't use that until now, and look how much I've inked. Oh, I know. It's not yeah, that looks cool. It's not to me a shortcut. To me, it's uh oh no, it's a tool. So yes, it's a tool. Right. So um, there we go. We got half man. I just noticed he has no upper lip. Half man. Oh no, half man lost his lip. Yeah. I need to back out to take a look at it to see how that looks. How does that look? Looks good. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. And there's no mm -hmm. shading in here. Good. All right, so. Wow. Yeah, that's. Uh, not not too often do you get to ink a face and show so many different textures and line widths and everything. But Half right, Man yeah. came through for us. Yes. Uh, I was. You know what? As we're go as I was going through this, I thought, "Oh my God, I can do this! I can do this! I can show this!" <laughs> so I think we got lucky. How about one more little thing, or should we stop it? No, no, no. One Let's wrap up that man. Yes. Well, well, not not all of them, but we missed the rivets. No, right. Oh my God, oh, the rivets! No. So there's two ways to do this, three ways to do this, ten ways to do this. Okay. I have, um, you see, I have the felt tip which I don't really think I've changed a whole lot as far as their settings because it's a really good tool. This is just basically a pen. You know, oh, that is way too thin. I have it at one. <laughs> right at four. Yeah. So you can just do this. Right. You know, um, kind of thick, but yeah. Or you can do it. The excessively complex Chris Dreyer way. Chris, the Chris Dreyer way. <laughs> That's Chris what we're Dreyer here for. Coins. I actually have two two brushes made called rivets. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Holy smokes! Right. And the cool thing about that is, is it has a shadow on it. <laughs> a, as a person who would like make something like that. Your rivets would be evenly spaced out like that. Right. That is too cool. So, you know, that one, that one I think is a little too close. I'll get rid of that. Okay. This is nice. Right. And you know, let's say that's not, let's say those rivets aren't spaced out enough. So okay. it's just um uh back into this wrench. And then I think it's uh where is that? Stroke. You can change the gap. Right. Oh yeah. And I can then See that that might be better. Okay. You know, just so you know, undo undoes what you did here. It doesn't do anything in the tools. Once okay. you've made the change in the tools, it's there. Right. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. That's better. That's cool. And, uh, because this program is so awesome, you can also do it. You can add those kind of things to these tools. Atom, oh, my wow. main character, my main character uh-huh. has those. I forgot. It's a slightly traditional, like Egyptian, ancient Egyptian, like tunic on the bottom. And I created right. a pattern for that. So that's his pattern. Oh. Right. So, and I have oh. it. Oh, yeah. I have it with this, with a taper, because uh-huh. if his clothing is going around his body, if I put that taper at 100 and I've got an area blocked off, uh, you know. <laughs> wow. Kind of goes around. That's a little too much there. But, yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. Really cool. But, you know what? That's all the extra bells and whistles because – that's the kind of stuff I didn't really discover until months and months and almost a year after I started using this program. I was just so enthralled with how intuitive Clip Studio is. And right. I'll turn off that so you can see. Again, don't yell at me. I know this is not right down in here. <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. I ran through some inking with Half Man. Half Man. And we All got, right. We got... All sorts of cool stuff on there. Yes. Uh, Done. Hey, I think this has been great. You've shown different tools. You've shown different, different, uh, you know, flesh and metal mm-hmm, and cloth. Right. I mean, all within this one, one panel, this one shot. So, mm-hmm. uh, lot, yeah. lot to decipher. Lot to go through. Go back yeah. through. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, Ask questions. Neat. Comments. Ask questions, which is a good thing for us. Because I will, I will, I will answer as best I can, or send you somewhere who, you know, who does know. I don't, I don't know all the answers. I just the only difference between me and you, Bob, is I've used this longer. That's it. Oh, you've used it a lot longer. I'm just playing right. with it. I'm the as setting it up. I was the newbie. I'm the newbie. <laughs> I'm just figuring it out. All right. Well, let's uh, zoom back out. And boom. Hey, we're back. We're back. So we're back. So um, that was part two mm-hmm. of the uh, Clip Studio Paint demo. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris, Chris, uh, we'll, we'll discuss to see if there's a part three or not. See what else we can <laughs> share and, and show them. Well, on um, that same page right over, there's a giant stone, stone uh, giant. So oh, we didn't yeah. ink stone. <laughs> plus, plus you got the tunnel you know uh, the yeah, main yeah. star of the book it's just a giant doorway you know, giant doorway um so um you did say that people could ask us questions so up yes. above i will put the uh sketch at nostalgic network.com email mm-hmm. um i will share those with chris and we will answer any questions that we get all right, and um, we got Sketch Magazine coming out May 3rd as a Kickstarter. So please go out and check that out. Um, we're about ready to go. I think I might be waiting for one article from somebody. Hmm. But it will be in this issue, I promise. <laughs> yes. um, I'm actually going to be building and working on this issue as the Kickstarter goes along so I can show some of the progress. Um, but most of the articles are in. We got some cool stuff to offer. Um, let's see. We talked about this, this. Mm-hmm. Oh, subscribe to the channel, please. Oh, yes, please. Um, yes. Um, you subscribe, hit the bell, you'll get notices on you know the next one we put out. Uh it helps us keep this growing, uh, helps the nostalgic network grow. Um, bunch of good guys. So um mm-hmm. subscribe and uh we also have our own channels. That's right. So we if do. you enjoy anything you see here, uh, check out below. Uh, I'll have Chris's channel with a link and my channel will be there as a link and please go and subscribe. Yes. And uh, see, see what we got going on. Yep. It's, so, mine's all Cup studio paint, inking, speed art, speed art. Yep. Just watch it happen and then leave a comment and, Say, hey, that was too fast. What did you do? Yeah, slow that down. And if you see something you want to question, so go make it. 
make them work for it. Make yeah. Them work for it. Yeah. Otherwise, I sit so, around and I think of like ways to get into trouble. You don't. You don't want to. You don't oh, want to have that oh, on your conscience. Like <laughs> no. Hey, give me that article before you get in trouble. Oh yeah. Well, if I get yeah. in trouble, I might have a whole lot of time to write. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, well, we'll be back. Yep. Uh, who knows what we'll talk about? But I'm sure we'll talk about something. All yep. right. Take All care. Right. Take care, Chris. See you, Bob.